Hey everybody, we're gonna go through uh, Dark Horse this time. Here's Joy Operations. And the, some other stuff. You got Hellboy here. The Bones of Giants, number one. And we got Crema, trade paperback. All right, let's go ahead and see what we got in here. Some interesting books. So enjoy. Brian Michael Bendis, Joy Operations, number one of five. Here's some artwork here. That's pretty wild. And some covers, cover A and cover B. David Mack. And Stephen Byrne. Hmm. I get David Mack's cover. That's pretty cool. And this looks like um, Radiant Black type stuff. It's just, here's more artwork over here. The coloring is really nice. So we got number one of five. Comes out November 17th, 32 pages, miniseries. Brian Michael Bendis, the New York Times best-selling and multi-Eisner Award winner, teams up with scorching hot comic sensation Stephen Byrne, Wonder Twins, Legion of Superheroes, for their very first creator-owned black blockbuster series. 55 years from now, Joy is an envoy, okay, a special agent of one of the Jonato Trust. Trust are corporate-owned cities that are the centerpiece of modern society. She writes wrongs for the trust. She is excellent, perfection, hard on herself, driven, almost legendary in some parts, until one day a voice pops in her head trying to get her to betray everything she has ever believed. Ooh. All this and also an exclusive look behind the scenes and a look forward to other Jinx World projects coming exclusively to Dark Horse. This is Gem of the Month, it says. Really nice art. Looks interesting. Then we got Hellboy, Mike McNolly, and Christopher Golden. Here's the cover there. The Bones of Giants, it says. Number one of four. Comes out November 3rd, so it's out. When a startling discovery is made in Sweden, the BPRD sends Hellboy and Abe Sapien to investigate. What ensues is a wild adventure full of Norse legends, myth mythical creatures, and a threat that could bring not just Earth, what that could bring not just Earth, but the nine realms of Norse mythology to their knees. Wow. Okay, based on the illustrated novel by Mike McNola and Christopher Golden, this four-part comics adaptation of Hellboy the Bones of Giants brings readers into Hellboy's fight against the Frost Giants with stunning art by Matt Smith, Hellboy and the BPRD, Long Night at Goloski Station, Barbarian Lord, Folklords, and, and colors by Chris O'Halloran, Folklords, Black Panther, Ice Cream Man, hey, Gem of the Month. And we got some story over here. Is this really what it looks like? How can it be? I've seen a lot of weird stuff. That's just my life. Wow. Yeah, we got Hellboy. The Silver Lantern Club, number two of five. This comes out November 24th. Miniseries. Let's see, look at the cover there. I don't know how Mike puts all this stuff out. He's got so many stories, man. Wow. What could a missing explorer and a string of strange killings possibly have in common? Silver Lantern Club members, Sarah Jewell, Lady Ba, Major Singe, or Singh, and Sir Edward Gray bring fresh eyes to each other's cases and find they meet unexpectedly in the middle. Okay, now we got tales from Magnoliverse so across the top there. This is Hellboy and the BPRD, 1957, Forgotten Lives. Comes out November 24th. This is Hellboy and Professor Trevor Bruttenholm team up for some quality father-son time at a New York potter's field where they try to unravel the mystery of a spectral being, spectral being haunting the packed graveyard. Upon arrival, the two of them quickly realize there may be more things haunting the, the buried poor 
at the mass grave than meets the eye. Celebrated writer Mike McNola and longtime collab collaborator Chris Robertson bring you another exciting Hellboy one-shot with exquisite art by Stephen Green and Dave Stewart. Now we got Lady Baltimore, the Witch Queen's hardcover. Comes on January 12th. 144 pages, $24.99. Very cool. I like that art. Reminds me a little bit of Jeff Smith, how he does. Okay. The Baltimore legacy is about to get bloody. Once she was Sophia Volk, living in a village overrun by evil. In time, she became Lord Baltimore's most trusted ally. Now more than a decade after his death, Europe has erupted with the early battles of World War II, and dark forces are rising again. With witches, vampires, and Nazis on the march, Sophia must embrace the title of Lady Baltimore, but can she fight monsters without becoming a monster herself? Horror genius writing team Meg McNola and Christopher Golden reunite with stellar art by Bridget Connell and colors by Michelle Madsen as they return readers to the world of Baltimore in this deluxe hardcover, complete with a sketchbook section. Very cool. All right, let's move on. Tales from the Otherverse, or Outerverse, I mean. There we go. That's cool. Hardcover. Comes out January 26, 144 pages, $24.99. Hmm. Mythical hero, Goju Karu, the Skinner, returns from the grave. The legendary golem awakens, and the powerful rider, Emojin, pursues her foes in this stunning collection of stories from Mike McNola and Christopher Golden's World of Witches and Warriors. Collects Goju Karu, the Skinner, 1 and 2, The Golem Walks Among Us, 1 and 2, and Imogen of the Riding Way, one shot. Okay. Collected stuff, very good. Jeff Lemire, hey, May's book, number 3 of 5. I picked up number one and put it back. I wasn't sure about it. It's pretty interesting. It looked interesting, but I just didn't get it. I may go back and get it if I get it or trade paperback or something like that. I just went to Laughing Ogre today and saw a bunch of different books I picked up. I have to do a haul video later. So we got uh, May's book, number three of five, Jeff Lemire. November 10th. It's out. What's the date today? Yeah, it's out. So, miniseries, yes. Today's the 15th, isn't it? Yes. Wills and Wills a melancholy building inspector who's been grieving the loss of his puzzle loving daughter for years after getting a mysterious phone call from a girl claiming it's her and that she's trapped in a labyrinth. Will sets off on a journey fighting through the corridors, tunnels, and monsters of his city on a mission to bring her back home. Wow. At times somber, haunting, perplexing, and ultimately consoling. This book drops us into the rabbit hole of memory and explores how the editing suite and our, how the editing suite of our minds can shape us, break us, and hopefully renew us. David Dash Motion. Again, and there's other stuff available there. Then we got Black Hammer Visions, Volume 2 Hardcover. January 19th it comes out. This is Scott Snyder. 112 pages, $24.99. It's a wild cover. Okay, this collection launches the second part of a special two volumes hardcover series of exciting stories taking place in the world of Jeff Lemire and Dean Orstrom's. Orstons, Ormstons, get the R in the wrong place. Eisner Award winning Black Hammer superhero hero comics. Creators such as Pat. Patton Oswalt, Jeff Johns, Mariko Tamaki, Scott Snyder, Chip Starsky, Kelly Thompson, Colin Bunn, Johnny Christmas, Cecil Custalucci, and many more of comics' top talents take on some of the greatest heroes and villains of the Spiral City. This graphic novel collects Black Hammer, Visions 5, number 5 through 8, and also features a sketchbook section and pinups by Veronica Fish, Dan Buriton. I think they spelled that wrong because I think he it should be without that R in there. 
but it's Bariton and more. Let's see if it says it down here. Nope, doesn't have Dan's in there. Okay. The Unbelievable Unteens. Wild cover. From the World of Black Hammer, number 44. Okay, November 10th, it's out. Jeff Lemire again. Unbelievable Unteens comic book artist Jane Ito finds her world turned upside down after discovering her comic book creations were real and she was one of them. As she and the Unteens reunite and put the pieces together, they take on and put the pieces together, they take on the forces that disbanded them from one final fight. For one final fight. My mistake. On my pool list by the time I got to page five. Mark Wade. Here's Andrea Sorrentino doing a variant cover there. It's different. Okay, and then we got Black Hammer Reborn, 6 of 12. Jeff Lemire again. Comes out November 24th. Ongoing. A multi-dimensional nightmare continues to wreak havoc on Spiral City. As bizarre versions of Black Hammer heroes come face to face with the brutal vigilante known as the Skull Digger. Featuring a special two-part Inspector Insector backup story by Rich Tommaso. That's a wild cover there. We got cover B down here. Okay, now we got Black Hammer Reborn here. Volume 5, Reborn Part 1 Trade Paperback. Comes out January 26th. 20 bucks, 19.99. Black Hammer Reborn is the next era of the Black Hammer universe. A 12-issue series by Jeff Lemire and Caitlin Yarsky that juxtaposes an achingly human story of domestic life, marriage, parenthood, and destiny with a pulse-pounding superhero thriller that peels back new layers of mystery and pulls the Black Hammer history into the present. Collects issues one through five of the series. Jeff Lemire's Black Hammer universe is a love letter to comics history, and he has yet to produce an issue that doesn't reflect his love of the medium. DC Comics News. Nice. Oh, now we got Frank Miller stuff here. What's this? Sin City. The Big Fat Keel, it says. Volume 3, Sin City. The Big Fat Keel, 4th edition, trade paperback and deluxe edition hardcover. Comes out January 26th, black and white, and 184 pages. Okay, that's the trade, and the hardcover is the same thing, but it's 100 bucks. Wow. The trade paperback is 7 by 10 The hardcover is 8 by 12 All black and white. This fourth edition volume of Frank Miller's signature series features new wraparound cover art. Hey! And is printed at original size. That's nice. The dangerous women of Old Town have saved Dwight more times than he can count. And finding friends like that isn't easy. Tonight these friends are being threatened in more ways than one. Dwight is going to do whatever it takes to keep the status quo even if it means killing a whole lot of people. <laughs> Brand new original wraparound cover art by Frank Miller, plus a 10-page pinup gallery from previous editions featuring art from Arthur Adams, Mike Allred, Sergio Aragones, or Aragones, Paul Chadwick, Joe Cooper, Mike Manola, and John Romita Jr. This deluxe edition is an oversized slipcase hardcover and portfolio. Okay. The slipcase is cloth with printing and foil stamping. Cool. The hardcover volume features a soft touch mat finished with spot gloss and foil stamping. A matching portfolio features a deluxe print of the fourth edition wraparound artwork by Frank Miller. That's cool. So I wonder if this is like the case, slipcase and everything like I did with my... Uh, Kingdom Come book I just got and did on my one of my latest haul videos and this is like going to be stamped in red foil stamping cool Stranger Things Winter Special this is cool that's different okay 
Chris Robertson doing the writing. On sale November 3rd, so it's out. 48 pages, six ninety nine one one shot. The winter holidays are upon us, and the kids of Hawkins are in full spirit, as they recall stories from their childhood to teach Eleven about Christmas. Tensions run high as Dustin swears he saw something lurking in the forest outside. <laughs> oh, man. And see, this is cool. I had a walkie-talkie like this when I was a kid. My sister had one, and I had one. We got it for Radio Shack. If anybody knows what Radio Shack is, wow. But back in the uh, late 70s, my goodness. So that's cool. I remember talking on that was a kid. Let's see. Gray Peck, Diego Galindo. Stranger Things here. Tomb of your Wind. Variant covers down here. Cover B, C, and D. How's that? You win number three of four. November 24th. 32 pages, miniseries, three ninety nine. Okay. With 14 inches of snow on the horizon and the, and the boys already frozen to, to the bone, tensions rung high. Will, will desperate to unravel the secrets left behind by young Bob Newby presses on after finding the entrance to a mysterious abandoned mine shaft. Meanwhile, Mr. Clark searches for the boys, but can he find them before something terrible happens? Hmm. Oh, boy. The definitive companion piece to the nostalgia-filled Netflix hit, Infinite Earths. Very cool. LaGuardia, deluxe edition hardcover, the must-have graphic novel library. Hardcover, let's see. Nettie Okorofor, Okorofor, writer. Hmm. January 16th or January 19th, my mistake. 232 pages, 30 bucks, 7 by 10. Hardcover. There's the cover there. Okay, what's this about? Deluxe hardcover edition of the Hugo. An Eisner Award winning graphic novel. Exclu exclusive extras include a chapter of Okorafor's script, a new cover, and never before seen art from Ford. Okay, a behind the scenes look at the creation process, an extensive process art section, and more. Hmm. On a planet Earth, on, on a planet Earth. Bursting with integrated extraterrestrial life. Pregnant Dr. Future Nwafor Chukwebuka is fleeing Nigeria under mysterious conditions. Her fiancé doesn't know she's left, and she's smuggling an illegal, sentient plant into NYC. There she'll be thrown into a vibrant immigrant community of humans and aliens, fighting for social justice and facing her past, in her unexpected future. The best of Okafor, Okorafor's prose, personal, political, and deeply relatable. Newsarama. All right. Crema, trade paperback. Johnny Christmas. Hmm. Comes out January 5th, 136 pages, full color. 1999, 7 by 10, trade paperback. Here's the artwork there. Okay. Number one New York Times best-selling cartoonist Johnny Christman, Christmas and Prism Award nominee Dante Luiz bring you a haunted tale of love, ghost, and coffee beans. Esme, a barista, feels invisible like a ghost. Also, when Esme drinks too much coffee, she actually sees ghost. Yara, the elegant heir to a coffee plantation, is always seen but only has eyes for Esme. The world is turned upside down when the strange ghost of an old world nobleman begs Esme to take his letter from New York City to a haunted coffee farm in Brazil to reunite him with his lost love of a century ago, bringing sinister tidings of unrequited love. Okay. Collects the comicsology original digital... Gro see, Groic. Somebody typed in, get the, hit the O instead of the P. Some of its graphic novel, Crema, in print for the first time. This book is a love letter to love swathed in the richest flavor imaginable. 
and one that enchants and haunts you with the taste of coffee all around it. Comic Watch. Okay. Now we got, what's this one? There's always a story in the Black Woods. Just make sure it's not yours. Okay, Children of the Woods, trade paperback. Joe Ciano, January 12th, and he's writing it. 144 pages, 1999, 7 by 10. Oh boy, that looks scary, that foot looks scary. What in the world is that thing? What is this? What's that? You don't think the story's over? Oh man, very well. I guess I have a little more time for you. Well, come on then. I don't have all night. <laughs> oh, that's spooky looking. Children of the Woods. Comes, say, January 12th. Okay. After a tale of revenge leads to a monstrous outcome, Amber and Quinn pay the price for power and magic as they become the newest children of the Black Woods. As Amber becomes inter intertwined with the secrets of woods and the town they live in, Quinn learns he is not alone in the woods, and not all who reside there are welcoming. Featuring art by Josh Hickson and story from Joe Ciano, Children of the Woods will explore the monster within and what is left when that monster finally comes out. Mm. Okay, now we got Killer Queens, number 44. David M. Boer, November 24th, it comes out 32 pages, 399 miniseries. There's a cover there. Then we got a variants B and C. All right. The Killer Queens and the Rebellion allies have been recaptured by ruthless dictator President Nastar. Their fluffy nemesis has finally caught up to them. Okay. The team stands before their firing squad. Things are looking um, grim. Can an ill-conceived and poorly executed plan actually work? Nope. Will our plan survive their final face-off against President Nastar and his <laughs> rhino corn stormtroopers? More importantly, will they get paid? Join the Quiller Qu Killer Queens for the thrilling conclusion. Let's hope it works, but... Uh. Neil Gaiman, Norse Mythology, with P. Craig Russell. Cool. Norse, Norse Mythology 2, 6 of 6. Comes out November 17th. Okay, it's ongoing. It's 32 pages. There's a variant down there. David Mack, that's pretty. Okay. Frey, one of the Asgardian guards, falls madly in love with the giantess Gerd. And in order to prove his love, must determine whether he get he gives up his magical sword to the giants for a hand, a sword that is prophesized pro prophesized to saved to saved him during Naragnarok. That is prophesized sized to saved him during Ragnarok. Okay, it must have saved him during Ragnarok. That's what it means. The second volume of Norse mythology is e is the equal of the first. This is a finely made comic and worthy and a worthy gift to the gods of Asgard. Kaboom. All right. Get the page done. Get the page turned. Okay, now we got the tales of Exandria, the Bright Queen. Hmm. This is number two of four. Darcy Van Polegeest. And Couple of Kooks is <laughs> doing the art. That's different. Okay, we got November 24th, 32 pages, 399 miniseries. Quana, who is Layla's Krenz, Layla's Krenz's right hand and the love of her many lives, as in the clutches of, is in the clutches of the dreaded Spider Queen. Layla's seeks information from one of the gnomes who sprung the trap and makes plans to rescue both Quana and the peace of the Luxon and the Spider Queen's possession. Okay. But with an adversary as old and clever as this one, there's no telling whether Layla might be playing right into her subtle hands. 
Critical Role Game Master Matthew Mercer joins Eisner Award winning writer Darcy Van Pol- Polgeest, Little Bird, and fan favorite artist Couple of Kooks in this new Critical Role te- series Tales of Alexandria or Exandria. That's cool. Yeah, it's Cyberpunk 2007, Big City Dreams, hardcover. That's pretty wild there. The variant cover over here. January 12th, 64 pages, full color, 1999, 7 by 10. Two scavengers in Night City make a living for themselves stealing cyberware and indulging in parties and brain dances. One seeks to become the most famous gangster in the city. The other longs for something more, meaning, belonging, warmth. As they chase their dreams, their paths begin to deviate. But one thing they can both agree on, in a place like Night City, you run, you fight, you change, or you die. Hmm. Okay, now we got Last Flight Out, number three of six. I picked up the first book and everything. I have to check this out and read this and see if it's any good. It looked interesting, though. Ouch. You got punched in the face. The only way to survive is to abandon Earth. Ouch. Somebody took his spot, maybe, and knocked him out. Okay. Came out already, November 3rd. 32 pages, three ninety nine. Okay, and this is 3 of 6, I said. Ben K. Wood's mission to save his daughter before the world ends has taken an unexpected turn when Ben finds out that the man she loves is being held captive in the most dangerous place left on Earth and threatens the already shaky alliance he's formed with the military. Hmm. Then we got the Orville. Number two, Artifacts, Part Two of Two, David A. Goodman. Okay, November 24, 32 pages, 399. In his quest to discover a legendary fleet of starships from a lost civilization, Ed's old astro-archaeology teacher has led the Orville into grave danger. The professor has not been entirely forthright, forthright with Ed and the crew, a fact they must now un- overcome if any are to survive this perilous endeavor. Okay. Oh, boy. I hate when people don't tell you this stuff, so you got to go through a perilous endeavor and try to survive. Okay, we got Colin Bunn, Lucky Devil, number four of four. November 3rd, he came out. 32 pages, 399. Miniseries. Lucky Devil. Mm-hmm. After an exorcism gone wrong, not so lucky... Down in his luck, Schlub Stanley finds he's retained all the demon's supernatural powers and positions himself the leader of an insane worldwide cult, only to find himself pissing off the demons of hell. Now Stanley heads to hell itself to determine whether or not he should keep these powers of the devil or remain, or remove them and go back to his boring life. <laughs> oh, boy. Some of the stuff they come up with. Oh, parasomnia. Nice cover there. A little reflection, reverse reflection there. Okay, we got Volume 1, Trade Paperback. This is Colin Bunn again. On sale January 26th, 104 pages, 1999. Okay, after his son's dis- his son disappears, a broken-down man braves a nightmarish dreamscape in order to find him and battle the ruthless cult that seeks to rule the land of dreams as the barrier between realities starts to collapse. Collects the four issue miniseries, a visually stunning dark fantasy wearing its pulp fiction influences on its sleeve, and setting up an intriguing mystery. But why though? <laughs> That's the name of the book. All right, just a second. Okay, I got a few more to do. I'll try to get through this pretty quick. This is Aubrey Citizen, Fico Asil, Savage Hearts number five hundred five. Special print only, backup, no kings, no masters, by Aubrey Sitterson and Goran Glovich. Gligovich, Savage Hearts. That's cool. Comes out November 17th, miniseries, 32 pages. The heart-pounding conclusion of the fantasy rom-com answers all your burning questions. Will Brahmin get her revenge on Lord Tretch? Will Growl, will Growl be any help whatsoever? And most importantly... Are those two going to smooch or what? From Aubrey Citizen, no one left to fight. The country 
or the comic book story of professional wrestling and Jed Dottery, world's finest Harley Quinn. All right. Okay, these other two I'm going to have to do really quick because I'm bound to just a few minutes. No one left to fight. That's uh, number two. Comes out November 10th. And this is Castaway's trade paperback. Comes out January 19th. Castaways. And here's some, these last ones here. EC Archives, Weird Science, Volume 1. And Jenny Zero, trade paperback. Then we got The Secret Land, trade paperback, and Hyperscape. Come out January 12th. And this one comes out January 5th. Hmm. And then these Dune figures, very cool. Shawnee, Glossu, and Gurney. And it's just, just some relist stuff here. But that's it for um, Dark Horse. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're going to be picking up. You guys have a great day, and Collector Dude is out.